The first job he did, he did finish it, and I paid him in full. But he's saying he was still out of pocket $1,700 because there is a bill here. The $1,700 represented 10 to 15 percent of the total job. Now, if you figure that out, look how much value I put into that job. But you're saying he left the job incomplete, and he's saying you left the job incomplete. So I think that the two of you just didn't make a good deal here well, or weren't I've, the two kind of people who should be working in a barter situation. Yeah, that's obvious now. Judge Corriero. Here's where the misunderstanding comes from. I don't think you ever had a meeting of the minds about this bartering. We can't use the number of hours to determine the cost of the ultimate projects. What you bartered for was a completed job. No. The job, he did. He didn't do the other but two. If he did the job. Not the other if two. If he did the other two jobs, would you be making this argument that it comes down to hours? I see your point, but I knew how long that was going to take. Because the previous job he did, the very first job he did that was completed and I paid him in full, I could see the kind of progress uh, him oh, and his okay, helper you made. You made an estimate. But he claims, and according to the papers, the both of you agreed on what the end result of your work would be. His end result was that second job. Your end result was welding those two bins together. No, no. Now, you claim that he did not finish the job. You can't barter for hours in relationship to a job. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, but you're not going to get paid for it because it doesn't make sense. What if I say I'm a carpenter and I can build a house for you? It'll probably be 10 hours and I'm going to charge you X and it takes me 50 hours. Whose responsibility is that? Now, is. if we had not done the barter, I'd have wrote him a check for three grand and we'd be done. I, don't, I don't, wouldn't care if he did it in a half a day. That's not the agreement. The agreement was they would work at a normal pace, and I would do my normal pace, which is very fast, by the way, and we would right. equal out day by day. I can see I'm not persuading, but I want to know where is the proof that you completed the second job? Because you claim that he didn't complete about the About two hours' work. I'm not worried about the hours' work. But the no, key no. is it was an hourly agreement, no. not a job agreement. I, I need to understand whether you completed the work that you agreed to do. Yes. I see here your exhibit. Does this photograph depict the job, and is it a finished job? After I painted it, after I hung the doors and the rain cutters, yes, he finished his he part finished of the job. It. Did you pay him for this job? I gave him fifteen hundred dollars for the materials. He gave it back when he saw my point that oh, so I was you feel way ahead. Oh, you don't owe him the fifteen hundred dollars for materials? Yes, I owe him the three thousand, but he owes me forty-three hundred and sixty dollars. Okay. Judge Acker, there's no agreement in order to have oh, a legally no binding agreement. agreement. No, there's no agreement. In order to have an agreement, there has to be a meeting of the minds. There have to be specific terms. And that's and why I've we're in listened court. to you, Mr. Johns. Don't interrupt me, please. All right. You're bartering two different goods that require two different amounts of labor to construct. That is vague, that is speculative, it's a hot mess. There's it, no agreement here. It may so what I mess. am going to do is look at the case, just the value of what was done and who's entitled to what. Let me start with you, Mr. Ross. The $1,624, for what project did you purchase those materials? Those are for the second project. The barter project. Which you completed, correct? Yes. Is there any dispute, sir, that he did not complete the second framing project? No. Why didn't you pay him for the materials? I did. He gave it back. Here's a picture of the check. It's in the exhibit. He paid him the sixteen twenty four. He returned. No, I gave him the, the fifteen hundred. Oh, this is the check that he uh, tore up. He tore up. And I didn't raise a wrench to him. I think things got heated. Things things got heated. Things I, I, did get heated, got, but I, I did not heated. raise a wrench. Mr. Ross, why'd you rip it's up the check? Because things were just like they are right now. They, and we were standing a whole lot closer. And I just figured that was the best way to diffuse it. And I'd work on it later. The lumber yard tried to collect for three so months. So when you from say me. diffuse it. When uh, I did that, and, I walked and, and away. I, I have great sympathy for people who feel like they've been wronged. So did you rip up the check because you said, you know what? We just need to call it even. Let's no. go our separate ways. You wanted right. to diffuse it. Yes. Wasn't that a way of diffusing it? You clearly had a misunderstanding. You eat your time and your costs. He eats his time and his costs. You two gentlemen go your merry way. Was that your intention? No, I figured it was a battle fought better a later day.